Hey, it's Monday afternoon. I'm on break from work and I am, a, I'm trying to eat lunch. <laughs> and I say trying because if, if you watched last week's video, you know that I had a challenge for my dietitian because I have anxiety about foods that are, have dairy in them, but it's like at phobia level to the point where if something looks creamy, I'm afraid of it. Even if I know 100% that it doesn't have dairy, it can still make me nervous. Um, so she challenged me to cook something and put a little bit of non-dairy milk in it as I'm cooking and then eat it. And so I made a chicken and mushroom dish this week and I put a little bit of oatmeal in it in the pan and it's oat milk. It is, it is the only thing that is milk about it is the name. <laughs> Just nothing to do with milk. It's oat juice. <laughs> I have a little bit of anxiety about it. Um, but I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat my lunch. It's going to be fine. But it's kind of annoying that I'm like, I'm literally sitting here looking at it like, well, yep, that's food. Should probably pick up the fork at some point. I haven't. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. I'm going to do it, though. I'm going to do this. We're going to work on this because this is a ridiculous phobia. There, there's nothing in it that is any reason for me to be nervous. So anyway, just pray for me. I don't know. This is, <laughs> this is why, you know, this is what therapy is for. It's okay. But yeah, I'm going to put the phone down and, uh, eat my lunch. Hopefully. Ta-da. I did it. I have eaten it. And I'm going to be fine. I'm totally going to be fine. I am convincing myself of that and telling myself that it's fine. It's 100% fine. Yes. Hi. It is Saturday evening-ish, five something. And uh, I was just about to uh, start uh, baking. I'm going to be making a uh, chocolate baklava cake which is, I was gonna make just chocolate baklava, but now I'm making a chocolate baklava cake. However, I thought I had all the ingredients I need, but it turns out, nope, I don't have baking powder. I could have sworn I did. Like I, I really, I could picture exactly where it was in the pantry and it wasn't. So I have to go back out for baking powder, but I am making this cake tonight. I'm making this cake, stay tuned. Baking powder acquired. <laughs> now I'm headed back home and uh, we gonna make this cake. I'm gonna tell you about it when we get home. Okay, I am home and I'm ready to make this cake. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you the story. Cause I, I feel like I've told part of it before in the vlogs, but maybe you didn't see those earlier vlogs. So let me, let me explain. So <laughs> a few years ago, I went to the Disney Epcot Food and Wine Festival. And at one of the booths, they had a chocolate baklava which was one of the best things I have ever put in my face. And this year I am going to the Epcot Food and Wine Festival for one evening because it's a special event at a work event I'm going to, but they do not have the booth and they do not have chocolate baklava. So I said, now it's in my head. Now I'm thinking about it. So I have to make chocolate baklava. So uh, <laughs> I bought, a five pound box, it was actually a five and a half pound bag of, of chocolate for baking with. But in my defense, it does not come in a smaller size. And I have a chocolate baklava recipe that I'm gonna use. Fast forward, this week I'm at work and I'm talking to one of my work friends in a meeting about the chocolate baklava. She says, oh, I wanna look up on Google. I wanna see what it looks like. What does it look like? So she's looking at pictures going, oh my gosh, it looks so good. And so I'm like, I'm, I gotta look now, I gotta look at it. So I pull it up on Google and I'm looking going, oh yeah, this is gonna be awesome. And I see a chocolate baklava cake. And I said, hmm, and I clicked on it. And I said, why make regular chocolate baklava when you can make a chocolate baklava cake? This thing, <laughs> it's, a, it's a chocolate baklava with chocolate cake on top of it. And, and I just, I just, I, I must have this in my life. So. 
I have all the ingredients. I have bought the baking powder and we are all set. I have all of my ingredients here. We are ready to go. The only ingredients that are not right here are the butter and the eggs, which are in the fridge. We're ready to go. Um, <laughs> I even had to buy a new pan. I had to buy a new cake pan. This is like a really tall cake pan and it's like, a, it has a little thing. All right, anyway, I did not have a pan like that. And I was like, oh we're, oh, we're doing this. And I bought the pan. Thankfully it was Amazon Prime because I ordered it yesterday and it arrived today. So the oven is preheating. I'm about to make this cake. So I will check back in with you when the cake is made in three, two, one. Okay, uh, <laughs> I just want to tell you something. Anyone who's watching my um, doing a uh, cooking with baking with Christy, I suppose, episode while I'm making this cake, anyone who's watching that will actually not get the following information because I don't want to, but I, um, <laughs> I was getting so excited making the nut and chocolate filling that I did the nuts and the chocolate and completely forgot to put in the other ingredients needed for the filling, the sugar, the cinnamon, the salt. I just didn't do it. And so I did all of the phyllo dough and the nuts and, the and everything. I layered it all up and buttered it. And then I realized you didn't finish the nut filling. I salvaged it though. It's back. What I did, <laughs> I took the top layer of phyllo dough off, the buttered phyllo dough, I took it off <laughs> and I put it aside on a paper towel and I took all that nut filling with only nut and chocolate, nothing else. And I just kind of, and I got most of it off and put it back in the food processor. And then I peeled up the other layer of phyllo dough and put it aside on my paper towel. I was able to get most of that nut and chocolate filling back into the um, food processor where I then added the correct things, mixed it up, put a half of it back on, grabbed one of my phyllo dough, you know, packets, layers, put it right back on there. Then did the rest of the nut mix, my phyllo dough. I salvaged it. Now, it remains to be seen. <laughs> How it will actually turn out. I think it's gonna be fine because I mean, it's gonna be fine. But I just thought that was kind of funny and you get to learn that in the vlog and they will not learn it. Anyone who does not watch my vlog and just watches the cooking video will not find that out. I'm not gonna tell them. I'm just gonna pretend it was all fine. <laughs> just thought you'd like to know. Anyway, I am about to continue. Wish me luck that I don't mess anything else up as I go. Hmm. Okay, sadly, this is a failure. This is not going to work. Um, the main reason it's not going to work is actually the Dominican Republic cocoa because the granules are too big. Well, you won't be able to see that. Um, see that? They're not, it's not um, as fine as just regular, you know, what we buy here in the grocery store cocoa powder, which means it's not combining in the batter. And the batter is now just, it's runny. There is no way that's gonna bake. So, I'm gonna have to give up for the night. I'm very sad about that. Um, I think I'm going to keep my prep. I'm gonna keep the chocolate baklava part. I'm just gonna put this in the fridge. And I think it'll be fine, honestly, because that part, you know, it's not the best. I mean, you know, look at it. It's, it's not the best. But <laughs> um, I think it's doable. I think this is okay. There's no need to redo this bit. So I'm going to stick that in the fridge. Um, I'm going to, I still have some butter left. Um, so I'm going to put that in the fridge as well because tomorrow I will like re-butter the sides of the cake pan when I make my new cake batter. So after church tomorrow, I will need to buy more sugar because I did run out trying to do this twice um <laughs> and um i think that's the only thing i need more of yeah right do i have enough flour i only bought a small flour so i believe i have enough flour but it's probably worth it to buy another flour too just in case i'll buy another flour i'll buy more sugar and i will buy just regular american cocoa powder 
It doesn't, I mean, you should smell it. It smells so good. But yeah, you can't, you can't cook with that stuff. I have found out the hard way. Bake. You can't bake with that stuff. I'm so sad. Look at this. this is, look at that. Just liquid. I'm very sad. I wanted cake tonight, and I'm not getting cake tonight. That is the biggest tragedy of them all. Hi, it's Sunday afternoon and I am ready to try again. <laughs> Let's bake this baklava cake. I went out and I rebought. I got more sugar, I got more flour because I, I ran out of sugar completely and I was close on the flour. I wasn't sure if I'd have enough, so I got more flour. Of course, bought regular American cocoa powder. Um, <laughs> and we are gonna try again make this baklava cake. Now, originally I was gonna keep the bottom of it, the baklava part that I had already made, and I was just like, you know what? No, no, I wanna start fresh. So we are completely starting over, <laughs> including the baklava part. So here's what I did though, because the last time with the baklava part, you know, the sheets, the phyllo sheets are long, they're rectangular. Um, so they weren't going into the thing well and they were like folding over and I couldn't figure it out. So this time what I did, I cut them like this so they'll actually go in the pan properly so we can see uh, for the baklava part if that works out better hopefully it will um, and then the cake part should definitely work out better now that I have regular cocoa powder hopefully hopefully the batter incorporates properly but anyway we're gonna give it a try so let's get started The recipe said to bake it for 45-ish minutes. Uh, it was nowhere near baked at 45 minutes. So I put it back in for another 15? No. Another 20? No. Another 15? No. Another eight after that? Yes. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm just hopeful that the outer edges and the bottom are not now overbaked due to how long the middle took <laughs> to get baked. I, I don't know. Now I have to let it cool. I have to let it cool down. And then the last step is to add a chocolate ganache on the top of it, but it is not cool yet. It actually just came out of the oven a short time ago and it is already 9 p.m. So honestly, I'm thinking the ganache is a tomorrow thing. So stay tuned tomorrow. <laughs> And uh, I will finish up the cake then, and then it will be the moment of truth. And cut into it, and we'll see how it is. But that is going to have to wait. You won't have to wait, because it's going to be in this same video. But I have to wait. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to let that cool out on the countertop for a little longer, and then I'll kind of wrap it up and put it in the fridge for tomorrow. But that's where we're at. Still don't know how it turned out. I'm a little afraid, but let's see what happens. Hi, it's tomorrow, uh, <laughs> and I'm ready to make the chocolate ganache. So currently, I am heating some oat milk on the stove, and uh, then I'm going to mix that oat milk with some more of that amazing chocolate from the five and a half pound bag. Um, <laughs> and that is, that's it, that's all the ganache is, it's just, Chocolate and oat milk. Now, the recipe does say heavy cream, so oat milk does not have the consistency of heavy cream. So my ganache is probably gonna be a little bit thinner than uh, the original recipe says, but um, it'll still be delicious. So I have taken the cake out of the fridge, just took the aluminum foil off of it, there it is. You can see the sides there, that's the baklava part there at the bottom. And the cake part at the top. So uh, yeah, we're gonna fix this ganache, 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 pour it over there. It does say that you then have to refrigerate it again or refrigerate it for at least 30 to 60 minutes before eating anything, before eating piece, probably I guess to get let the ganache harden again because um, it'll be liquidy, you're gonna pour it over there. So that's what's coming. <laughs> uh, so stay tuned and uh, we'll pour the ganache on there and stick it back in the fridge and then hopefully later today, I will be eating a piece of very yummy cake. Let's see. Time to pick a question. 
All right, let's see what we're doing here. This one? If you had to spend an entire summer working at one of our country's national parks or historic sites, which one would you choose? Grand Canyon. Um, I just, the Grand Canyon is just such a majestic and amazing place that um, I love, I mean, I've only been there once when I was, I think I was in high school at the time. Um, so I feel like I'd appreciate it more at my age now, but I, I mean, I appreciated it then too, but I just see pictures of it and it's just, it's so amazing how it's so you know vast and how cool it is. I don't know. So I feel like, you know, maybe working there might be pretty fun. Um, and just being able to be in that environment. I don't know what I would do for work, but <laughs> I mean, honestly, I would, I would rather not work at a historic site or a national park at all, to be honest with you. It does not sound like my kind of gig, but so really the question I'm answering is which one would I want to visit first is actually more what I'm answering. Um, <laughs> I don't think I really want to work at any. Now, where I would work is Disney. But that is not a national park or a historic site. That is totally where I would work. Um, so is that really a good answer to that question? Maybe not, but that's what you get. It's the sound of angels singing as they observe the majestic beauty of this cake. Um, yeah, it's a mess. I mean, you know. <laughs> but... Um, I'm going to cut into it. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. This is so exciting. Okay. I have managed to get a little bit of everything on the fork. Moment of truth. Hmm. Okay. I taste the baklava. Yep. The baklava is in there. I'm definitely tasting that. The phyllo dough adds a nice little crunch to it. Nuts and the chocolate. It's kind of brownie-ish, really. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. That second bite. Um, <laughs> I feel like almost every bite is going to be different because you get the phyllo dough. Like how much nut and chocolate are you going to get from that baklava on each bite, you know? Mm. The chocolate cake is nice and moist. Um, I am eating kind of from the middle. Let me see if I take a piece off the edge because that was something I was worried about because the middle took so long to bake. I was worried that the edges might be a bit overbaked. It is a bit hard. <laughs> um, let me see. So this is an end piece. And it's definitely harder <laughs> than the middle of it, but let's see. Mm, still good. <laughs> That end piece is a little more brownie like so like the outer edges definitely did i think over baked a little bit like it's a bit hard but the middle is perfect moist delicious the baklava very nice the cake delicious it's chocolate cake i mean you can't go wrong the ganache is quite nice so overall, I'm going to call this a win. Would someone else who is more skilled at baking have made it better? Probably. Most likely. <laughs> Honestly, what I wish I could do is ask my sister to make me one. She is an amazing baker. But my sister can't eat chocolate. And it would be exceptionally cruel of me to have her go through all this for a cake that she cannot eat. So <laughs> we're not gonna do that. Um, <laughs> am I tempted though? Yeah. Um, that said, uh, am I still gonna eat this? Oh yeah.
Um, am I still gonna offer pieces of it to other people so that I don't have to eat this whole thing by myself? Yes, and that is not me trying to get rid of something that's bad, not at all. This is not as good as I was hoping due to my own unskilled baking attempts. <laughs> so I think a skilled baker could have made this and it would have been ridiculously good. I have made it and it's very good. I'll take it. Would I make this again? I had so much trouble that currently the answer is no. <laughs> maybe, maybe in time when the trauma has faded, I might try it again. But for now, I'm done. And I'm going to enjoy finishing the rest of that. And that's going to be it for this week's vlog. Um, <laughs> the entire vlog was basically taken over by that dumb cake. And it's okay. Um, it's fine. I'm glad I'm done because, quite frankly, every time I started to work on that cake, I was getting anxious. <laughs> it's just literally, it's been like I started on Saturday and I tr it was just awful. I just, tr I was, I tried so hard. <laughs> it was like two hours on Saturday and it just, mm. And then yesterday, it was another few hours with all the baking. <laughs> so then today, like I'm doing the ganache and I'm like, I was telling a friend of mine, like, I don't want, she's like, are you gonna eat it? I was like, yeah, I don't really want it now. <laughs> it's been, it's been soured a little bit, but no, it's good. It's very good. I am gonna eat it. But yeah, that was an ordeal. <laughs> anyway, let, let's just, let's just end this now with prayer. <laughs> Lord, I want to thank you very much for being with me this week, this weekend, um, through all the crazy, trying to make this cake, um, and just through everything else that's going on, Lord. You know what's going on in my life. You know what's bothering me at the moment, and I know that you already are helping me with it, so thank you so much for that. Thank you for working with me, my anxieties that I have, my fears. Um, just I know that you're with me, and I'm so grateful for that, Lord. I pray for everyone watching this, whatever their fears, whatever their anxieties, whatever their concerns are. I pray that they would feel your presence with them, know that you're helping them, know, they, know that you're always with them. And if there's anyone out there who's struggling, Lord, I pray your comfort on them, comfort them as only you can, and also send people into their lives who can comfort them and help them. Um, now it's about to go into the next week. I simply pray that your will be done in and through my life, the lives of my immediate and extended family and friends, and just look forward to seeing what you have in store, Lord. It's in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that I pray. Amen. Now I'll end it as always with number six, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Bye.